My friends, welcome back to the Super Divorce Superverse. This is Nicholas Villars here, one half of the synth pop duo known as Super Divorce. We're here today to take a look at Storm Shadow, one of the most recognizable characters in the world of G.I. Joe. From toys to comics to movies and beyond, this white clad ninja has been involved in every iteration of Joe since he debuted working for just about everyone along the way as well. He's been U.S. Army Special Ops, Cobra Commander's personal bodyguard, Master Sergeant on the G.I. Joe team, and Lone Wolf Ninja Assassin. Storm Shadow debuted in 1984 as a Cobra operative in the G.I. Joe Marvel Comics, and also as part of Series 3, of the G.I. Joe action figures line. His comic debut in Larry Hama's classic G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero series, was featured in issue 21, which was released in March of 1984. The issue revolved around Scarlet, who was kidnapped by Storm Shadow, and the mission Snake Eyes carried out in order to rescue her. Hama took an experimental approach to this issue and left out all of the dialogue. It was a risky move for the time, but fans ended up loving it. It's since become one of the most revered issues in the original run. And though the connections between Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes weren't explained right away, it was hinted at in the final two panels of Joe 21, as the two were shown to have matching tattoos on their forearms, a hexagram of the I Ching symbol for already fording or crossing a river or stream. As for Storm Shadow's first toy release, mentioned previously, he premiered in 1984's Series 3 alongside newcomers Baroness, Blowtorch, Duke, Firefly, Mutt, Ricondo, Ripcord, Roadblock, Scrap, and Spirit all fresh faces to the kids who would be begging mom and dad for new additions to their G.I. Joe toy collections that year. That first version of Storm Shadow would be sold in stores all across the U.S. until 1987. He would also be sold across the world under various names in different countries through the early 90s. In the UK, he was part of the Action Force team. In Spain, he was known as Sombra, in Brazil as Cobra de Halo, Argentina as the red-colored Satan, black-colored Ninja Ku, normal, traditional white-colored Cobra de Halo, and also as part of Argentinian playsets for Cops and the Trinchera. In Mexico, he was called Sombra Blanca, and later, Storm Shadow was also released in China. Over the years, there have been 50 different official U.S. releases of the Storm Shadow character, even appearing in 2006 without a mask or traditional ninja garb, and packaged under his full name, Tommy Arashikage. Now, because Storm Shadow has appeared in so many different versions of the G.I. Joe franchise, he's been depicted in many different ways, not just in his physical appearance, but also in his demeanor. He's been war buddies with Stalker and Snake Eyes in Vietnam before uh, the G.I. Joe team was assembled, trained as an assassin by his uncle. He's been a Cobra member and a Cobra defector. He's been a Joe member and a Joe defector. We've seen him as a young boy, a soldier, a ninja, and in a strange design choice, a man with black sunglasses and a simple white jacket. Not my favorite version of this character. Storm Shadow has also been featured in three different G.I. Joe video games. 1985's G.I. Joe A Real American Hero, 1992's G.I. Joe The Atlantis Factor, and 2009's G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra. And if you follow this channel, you might have seen me unboxing a brand new pair of ASICs inspired by Storm Shadow's second action figure, the 1988 digital camo version. 
In case you were wondering, that would have been part of Series 7 of the G.I. Joe action figures, and it was produced and sold in the U.S. until 1990. And that's just a little look at Storm Shadow. Hope you found this miniature spotlight to be informative, and if your interest has been piqued, I recommend following the link in the description over to readcomic.to where you can enjoy digitally the entire original Larry Hama run on G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero. All 155 issues for you to read. Totally free. And there's quite a selection of other classic comics and manga for you to sift through over there as well. So give it a gander. And with that, I want to thank you for watching and uh, and ask you to please look forward to another video like this one, but featuring Snake Eyes coming up uh, just shortly. So have a fantastic day. Take real good care, my friends. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. My friends, we are Super Divorce, a synth-pop duo with a full-length album called Action Figures. You can listen to it on many streaming platforms, including Spotify, where you can follow us and keep up to date with all of our tunes. If you like what you hear, why not pick up a copy of Action Figures on CD, cassette tape, or vinyl record at superdivorceme.com and uh, grab a Super Divorce Rules t-shirt while you're there too. And hey, uh, while you're here, please make sure that you've liked this video, sub to our channel, and bong the gong for notifications. We go live here every single day, so don't miss out on your chance to join us in real time for chats and the latest in pop culture news. We have a fantastic community, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. On top of daily vids and some rad tunes, we also produce a weekly podcast called the Super Divorce Supercast with new episodes every Friday, as well as a comic book review show called Super Fanatics, a horror movie review show called Super Scary, some video game streaming, and a Star Wars review called Sequential Star Wars, in which I, Nicholas, and my good brother Andrew review the Star Wars films and TV shows in sequential chronological order. And with the shilling complete, please look forward to another video here on the official YouTube channel of Super Divorce. We gonna go viral with this 